I have been with my boyfriend for going on 10 years. Things have been generally good, but the financial situation I'm in is depressing. I met him when I was in my last year of college and moved to an expensive city, Seattle, to be with him. He was making $20 an hour then, and I was making $15. Flash forward 10 years, now I'm making $24 an hour, and he's making $55 an hour. We were living in a $1,400 apartment when I moved here, but now we're living in a $3,500 apartment. He's making $115,000 a year, and I'm making $45,000 a year. Given how ridiculous prices are here, I have told him many times I would like to move somewhere affordable, like the suburbs. He refuses to leave Seattle. He hates living in the suburbs and wants to stay here because it means he can get a higher paying job. Meanwhile, I'm making low pay and don't see a clear path to earning more than I am now beyond 3% annual raises, which is all my company gives. I've never asked him to help me financially at any stage of our relationship until now because he insisted on moving into a rental I can't afford. We have always split all expenses and paid for our own things separately until now. He's making $6,000 more per month than me. He agreed to pay additional rent. He's paying $150 a month on my behalf. He's not giving me that money. I have to do an equal amount of house cleaning in exchange. I've agreed to do four hours of cleaning every month for it. Now he's going out to eat all the time and I can't afford to because I have an extremely tight budget of $375 for food and anything else I need, like clothes or toilet paper. Since I can't afford it, I stay home. To make matters worse, we just moved into an apartment last month, but he hated it and insisted on getting out of the lease early and moving to a new place, which we just did. And now I'm in debt $4,000 to him in double rent and an extra security deposit. If we don't find someone to take over the lease, I'll have to pay $1,500 for early lease termination. I told him I couldn't afford to move out of the last place given my income, but he's making me pay half of everything for it, which I think is unfair. Additionally, I've done 95% of the housework in the past 10 years, unless I nag him relentlessly, which has angered him a lot in the past, and that has bothered me quite a bit. Now I have to do all the housework myself anyway, since he's paying $150 of my rent. He also possibly wants a child soon, and I'm feeling very uneasy about that idea since he's completely unwilling to provide for me in that situation. I would still have to work full time, and I feel confident that the brunt of childcare would fall on me. Lately, I've started feeling so stressed about my financial situation that I find myself tearing up I have to start going to the food bank every week because I have zero money left in my budget for food, and making $24 an hour means I do not qualify for any kind of governmental aid. Inflation has also been out of control, and I can't even afford to go out to eat. A basic meal in Seattle is easily $30. I think since he is the one who gives me the choice but to leave him or stay here and be in a bad financial situation, and since he's making $6,000 more than me every month, he should be willing to help me more. And it feels kind of harsh that he's paying an extra $150 a month for my portion of the rent. But I have to do housework in exchange. I don't know how to feel about things, but I feel very, very stressed. Also, he refuses to marry me because he says it's just a legal thing, a piece of paper. And when I have said I want to marry because it's a meaningful and romantic thing for me, he says I'm superstitious and claims my feeling that way is a reason not to marry me. So the possibility of marrying and us sharing finances is out of the question. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. You've been in a relationship for 10 years with someone who doesn't take your needs into consideration. That's a major red flag. He wants to live in Seattle he insisted on spending money to get out of a lease because he didn't like it. He goes out to dinner even though you can't afford to. He has a maid who will do 100% of the housework for $150 per month, and now he might want a child? He's not your spouse or even a legal domestic partner because he would be legally responsible to provide for you. That's the legal thing he's talking about. I'm not sure what has happened in your life that makes you think 
or feel that you don't deserve better than this, but he's using your love for him and your lack of finances to control you. And I can assure you that you do deserve better. Everyone does. Comment to original poster, end this relationship. Just get out. You aren't partners in any way. He's selfish and you can't afford a child, so just give up. You didn't have to move in with him into a place you can't afford. Go around the forums and find a nice lady with a house who wants to rent out a room and move in with the nice cat lady. I promise you, you will be way happier. Do not give him another dollar for rent. He can cover it all until you find a place. If he gets mad, you tell him your Uncle Post says, stay mad, bro. You couldn't have waterboarded me into admitting I got myself into a situation like yours. Girl, what are you doing? Now for the update. Two days after I posted, I came home from work to find my boyfriend in a really intense argument with one of his friends. He was on the phone and I could hear him yelling. I didn't want to interrupt, so I snuck into the kitchen to make myself a snack. While I was in there, I overheard him talking about wanting to take a vacation to Hawaii next month. I couldn't believe it. I mean, didn't we just talk about how he broke the lease on the last apartment and I'm now stuck with a 4K bill? So he gets off the phone and tells me we need to start planning our trip to Hawaii. I mean, what? I pointed to the stack of bills on the table and asked him how we could afford a vacation when we could barely afford rent. He brushed me off and said it's important for our relationship. This is just ridiculous. At that point, I just wanted to focus on my job and put in some more hours to help us out. At work, I found out about a potential promotion that could give me a decent pay increase. The catch is, it would require a lot more responsibility. I mentioned it to my boyfriend, thinking he would be excited for me, but he just acted like he didn't care. He was too busy telling me about how well he did on a project at work. Like, okay, cool, but I just found out I could get a promotion. So, I went to dinner with my parents, and my dad asked about when we were getting engaged, like he always does. My boyfriend laughed it off and said we weren't ready for that yet. This was when I felt the familiar tension rise up in me. After dinner, my dad pulled me aside and said he's worried about me and my relationship. He thinks it's too strained and I'm not getting the commitment I deserve, which is kind of what I've been thinking. Later that night, my boyfriend suggested we go out for drinks to celebrate his project. I was kind of hesitant because I had a long day, but I went anyway. At the bar, he spent most of the time talking to his co-workers and ignoring me. I was so frustrated. I confronted him about ignoring me, and he said I was overreacting. He always says that. The next day, I found a receipt for an expensive watch he had bought. When I confronted him about it, he said it was an investment. I asked why he needed it right now, but of course he had no answer. I told him we need to prioritize our finances over luxury items, but he said he deserves to treat himself. We went to a friend's birthday party that weekend and I noticed him flirting with a woman at the bar. I was uncomfortable and pulled him aside to talk about it. He just laughed and said it was harmless. The tension was definitely building between us and I decided to leave the party early. The next few days, I started looking for a more affordable place to live without him knowing. During a lunch with my sister, she told me she's pregnant and engaged. That evening, I told my boyfriend the news and he just wanted to talk about his work. This is when I realized I really need to find someone who's going to support me. A week later, I got a call from my landlord about a rent increase. I was so stressed. I suggested we move somewhere more affordable but he dismissed it yet again. I reached out to my sister for advice and she suggested I take a break from the relationship. While out grocery shopping, I ran into my boyfriend's mom. She mentioned wanting to plan a family gathering and I couldn't help but feel anxious about it. At the family gathering, his relatives started asking about kids. I felt so uncomfortable. After dinner, I overheard him talking to his cousin about our relationship and he referred to me as the one holding him back. I was so hurt. I decided to make a list of our financial obligations to present to him and have a serious conversation. A few days later, he surprised me with a date night, but honestly, the mood was just tense. I brought up my concerns and we ended up arguing. I suggested we consider a trial separation to reevaluate our priorities and he just blew up. 
He said I was overreacting and didn't understand the pressures he was under. When I got home later, he had packed some of his things and decided to stay with a friend for a while. He left a note saying he needed time to think about our future and what he wants. In the days that followed, I focused on my job and planning my finances. I also started going to a budgeting workshop at my community center to help gain more control over my situation. Edit. After a couple of weeks, he reached out and wanted to meet up. We met at a coffee shop and he explained that he wanted to work through our issues. He apologized for calling me out in front of his family and admitted he was being immature. He also returned some of the items he had taken with him. We agreed to take a break from each other, but he asked me to be patient as he figured out his next steps. I'm still living in the same place and he's now renting a room from a friend. Am I the idiot for refusing to be my husband's emotional crutch while he plays the victim? I have posted here before. Long story short, my husband of two years cheated on me twice. I got married to him without knowing about his past infidelities and the baggage he carried. He told me he has an intimacy addiction and did not realize how bad it was. This time around, he has joined a support group and is doing therapy. Let's say hypothetically, the cheating will not happen again and I forgive him. What do I do about these problems? He never calls or texts me when he is at work. He says he is super busy, but he has time to go on Facebook and watch his TV shows, yet he does not have time to check up on me or even send me an I miss you text. I scroll back to our WhatsApp messages and it's literally me sending him five or six messages and him sending back one reply. He has told me from day one that he does not like to be questioned too much. He does not like to be interrogated. He only tells me things because he wants to, not because he has to. We haven't been a couple in such a long time. I go grocery shopping by myself. He hasn't taken me out to restaurants in such a long time. I used to tell him to take me for breakfast on Sundays and he would just order food at home sometimes. I was just grocery shopping by myself and felt so envious of the couples who came together. It's such a simple thing but means everything to me. He prioritizes his friends and religious gatherings over me. He would never cancel plans with them but would reschedule his plans with me or try to squeeze in both. For example, he left a Father's Day barbecue early because he had to be at a religious event. Now I don't even know if it really was a religious event because he used that as an excuse to cheat. I want a life partner who cares for me, who asks me how I am doing, who messages me throughout the day, who makes us a priority. Is that too much to ask? I honestly don't think this marriage will work anymore. Even putting the cheating aside, he has been living a bachelor lifestyle for so long that I don't think he has it in him to let go of that. Do you think things could change? If you were going through this without the cheating part, how would you make it work when there's so much hurt and distance now? Now for an update. We had a talk when he came home. I asked him to tell me what went wrong, why he felt the need to cheat, and what caused us to get to this point. He told me I wasn't here for him emotionally or physically for the past year. I went back to school for a postgraduate certificate to try to enhance my career so we could pay off our debts quickly. He told me I don't respect him as a husband and I treat him like a child. I am passive aggressive and I gaslight him. I told him the reason I don't show respect is probably because I didn't truly forgive him for the first time he cheated. He blew up on me and told me this relationship can no longer work then. I'm not saying I am a perfect wife, but I know I tried hard to be a good, caring wife. I have my flaws too, but being disloyal is not one of them. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I'm anxious and sad for you, just reading all of this. I'm really sorry you are not being valued by this very selfish guy. Do not waste any more precious years in this arrangement. Divorce. You deserve so much better, Queen. Comment 2. He's shown you that he doesn't care nor does he prioritize you, so the only thing you can do is leave. When a person tells you who they are, believe them. Nothing is going to change. Now for the update. The day after my last chat with my husband, I decided it was time to focus on me. I was tired of being this side character in my own life, you know? So I signed up for a pottery class at a local studio. I figured smashing clay around would be a good way to feel better about myself. 
Besides, I needed something that was just mine. Something that didn't involve scrolling through social media with my husband. During my first class, I met this woman named Sarah. She was super friendly and funny, like the kind of person who just makes everyone feel good. I really needed that at the time. She invited me to join a small group for coffee after class. And honestly, I jumped at the chance. We chatted about our lives over lattes in this cozy cafe nearby. Sarah shared that she had recently gotten out of a tough relationship, so she totally understood my situation. It was like finding someone who got the same weird puzzle I was dealing with. I started attending pottery classes regularly after that, and I formed this great friendship with Sarah. It felt amazing to have someone who understood and actually cared about what I was going through. One evening, a few weeks later, I noticed my husband had left his phone on the kitchen counter. I don't know what got into me, but I got curious and took a peek at his messages. I saw texts from a woman named Lisa that seemed flirty. I mean, come on. What was I supposed to think? At dinner, I decided to confront him about Lisa, and of course he got all defensive. He claimed Lisa was just a friend from his support group trying to help him through his recovery. Yeah, right. I didn't buy it, not for a second. So I pressed him for more details. He admitted they had spoken about his struggles, but nothing more. Nothing more, huh? I suggested we attend a couple's therapy session together. He reluctantly agreed, saying he wanted to work on our relationship. Well, I sure hope so because I was done doing all the heavy lifting. We scheduled the first session for the following week. The night before therapy, my husband got a call from his father. He stepped outside to take the call, and I overheard him saying, I can't let her know. My heart dropped. What the hell was that about? During the therapy session, my husband opened up about his struggles with addiction. The counselor guided us through discussing our feelings and communication. We left the session feeling slightly more connected, but still unsure about everything. A few days later, we attended his family's holiday dinner. I was dreading it, but we had agreed to support each other through this process. Things got a bit awkward when my husband's father made a comment about our marriage. Like seriously, at the dinner table? I stood up for myself, saying we were working on things. To my surprise, my husband seemed shocked, but proud of my assertiveness. I was finally standing up for myself, and he noticed. We agreed to prioritize date nights and communication moving forward. It was a step, at least. The next week, Sarah invited me to a gallery opening. I had a blast. The evening was fun, and I felt proud of how far I had come. When I got home, my husband asked about my night. His tone was different, more genuinely interested. I told him about the gallery, and he asked if I wanted him to come with me next time. I was surprised. A few months ago, he wouldn't have even asked. Now he was offering to join me. Things were still a work in progress, but I could see small changes. I was learning to put myself first, and honestly, it felt good. Not perfect, but good. I was getting there. Edit. I probably should have mentioned that I did try couples therapy a few years ago, but it didn't go anywhere because my husband refused to open up. This time, however, he showed genuine interest. As for the woman from his support group, I found out he had lied about her being just a friend. They had exchanged some flirty messages, but he insisted nothing physical happened. We're still navigating all this, but I've made it clear that I'm no one's second choice. I'm prioritizing my self-worth. Am I the idiot for demanding my wife sign a post-nup after her emotional affair and secret abortion? I met my wife over eight years ago in college. We practically lived together soon after we met. We earned our undergraduate degrees and graduate degrees together, got our first jobs together, and lived in our first apartments together. We lived near her family, just her dad and mom, for about six years and moved around a lot for our careers, but always remained close to them. I would describe our relationship as perfect, except for our relationship with her family and the lack of community support since we never really knew anyone. When Infection 19 happened, we were able to move to the town where I grew up. She had been sexually innocent, attacked at her job, I wasn't happy in my job, and we both had the opportunity to start fresh. She wasn't willing to move to my state at all. There was no basis for her decision. So I gave her an ultimatum to come with me because I knew she would love it 
and it would ensure she would give it a chance after I had given her area a chance for over six years and wasn't a fan. We moved into my family's neighborhood and she fell in love with the town, my family, the people, and the opportunities. She was so happy and so was I. Once again, I felt like the relationship was amazing. She wanted to start her own business and I encouraged her to do so. The business grew extremely fast and people latched onto my wife and she soon became a leader in the community by being on many boards, organizations, and more. She gained more friends than she ever had before. Things took a turn when she was fired from her regular job as her business took off. I had to support her and her business since it wasn't even breaking even yet. We decided to go all in and I helped a lot, contributing around 20 to 30 hours a week on top of my regular job which was over 40 hours a week, and managing chores. It was the hardest year ever because I practically only worked and slept. I worked hard in my regular job to be able to get promoted and afford her medical bills. She is diabetic and help us live beyond paycheck to paycheck. During this time, I had a small business that dealt with real estate before I married her. I sold all my assets to buy her an office space to help solidify the business. In addition to the two jobs and chores, I was now renovating an old building. I travel a lot for work, about one week or so a month. This past month, I was gone for over three weeks, and when I came back home, a friend messaged me that someone was claiming that my wife was cheating on me and trying to reach me. I got in contact with the guy, and sure enough, he had pictures and texts that clearly showed my wife in the bedroom. Basically. She had been on a bunch of dating apps for over four weeks. She was sexting with pictures with dozens of guys. She was talking about meeting them in our office building and our house, which hurt so much. She admitted that before cheating, she also aborted our child in secret, and I literally had no clue. Both of these things ended the life of me. We were trying to have a child. I made her take a lie detector test, and basically I think she never met anyone, or planned to which is hard to believe. She practically hates her dad for cheating on her mom with these types of apps, which shocks me why she would even consider it. Why I am so torn is that she crossed certain thresholds, but not others, and we have so much good history together and have built so much together. I've asked for a simple 50-50 post-nuptial agreement, which she declined despite choosing everything she wanted I was hoping to divvy things up so I can leave faster if she did this again. In retrospect, a post-nuptial agreement doesn't do anything. She says she cheated on me for attention and that I wasn't emotionally or physically available, but I was physically working for her. And emotionally, I felt like she never communicated anything to me and she stopped being intimate with me, but did it for strangers. She has so many great qualities and I love her. It's hard because we've had so much good together. I am comfortable with her and everyone loves us together. I just don't know if what she did is worth throwing away a three year marriage and five years of togetherness. Now for an update, I wanna be clear that she never actually met these guys, but she sexted them. If she had actually met them in person, I would already be gone. I had her take a lie detector test and that was something she passed. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, personally, I would be done. She cheated and now she's lying about the reason and blaming you. She had a secret baby unaliving while telling you, yes, I'm definitely still trying to have a child with you. You will never trust this woman fully. You're not throwing anything away. She threw it away when she lied and cheated. Comment two, when she aborted, she rejected both you and your child. You're in love with a fantasy and it's not what she has shown you who she is. Update me. Now, for the update. Three days after I last posted, I got home from work and saw Olivia sitting at the kitchen table with her phone. She looked pretty stressed out, like she was scrolling through messages and quickly locked her phone when I walked in. I asked her about her day, and she gave vague answers about her business, but she seemed distracted. That night, I got a text from my brother who casually mentioned seeing Olivia at a local coffee shop with a guy named Mark. The coffee shop was a place I used to go to when I lived in my hometown. It was known for its comfy seating and good vibes. 
I figured it wasn't too much to worry about at that moment. But when I confronted Olivia about the coffee shop sighting, she just laughed it off, claiming she was just networking for her business. So I decided to drop it, but kept feeling uneasy about their meeting. A few days later, I went to my parents' anniversary dinner where Olivia was invited with my siblings and their partners. During dinner, my dad raised a toast and jokingly asked if Olivia and I were planning on starting a family soon. I noticed Olivia's smile faded for a moment before she quickly recovered and laughed along with everyone. After dinner, I stepped outside for some fresh air and overheard my sister Kate talking to my sister Rachel about Olivia's recent behavior. Kate mentioned that Olivia seemed distant lately and had been more secretive with her phone. I went back inside and found Olivia in the living room, texting like crazy and not acknowledging me at all. That night, while she was asleep, I checked her phone and found messages from Mark that were totally flirty and suggestive. The next day, I asked Olivia about her relationship with Mark, and she just claimed he was a friend. I pressed her about the messages, and she insisted they were harmless jokes. Our argument escalated, and she accused me of being paranoid and overreacting. A few days later, I found an invitation to a birthday party on the fridge for one of her business contacts, Mark. Olivia was excited about going and insisted I didn't need to come, saying it would be a small gathering. I decided to show up unannounced to see for myself what was going on. When I got to the party, I found Olivia and Mark laughing together in a corner, clearly enjoying each other's company. I overheard them talking about a business partnership, but the tone felt off, like it was flirty. I confronted Olivia in front of the guests, asking her to explain her relationship with Mark right then and there. The room went silent, and she looked embarrassed, but tried to brush it off as a misunderstanding. I called her out for her texts and her behavior, and people started whispering among themselves. Olivia got defensive, claiming I was ruining her night and embarrassing her in front of her colleagues. I left the party, and as I walked out, I could hear Mark trying to calm her down, saying it was just a misunderstanding. I decided to take matters into my own hands, so I contacted Mark directly and arranged to meet him. We met at a local diner where I confronted him about his intentions with Olivia. Mark denied any wrongdoing and claimed they were just friends, but I could tell he was lying. I told him to stay away from Olivia, making it clear that I would not tolerate any more of this behavior. I returned home and confronted Olivia about meeting Mark, and she became furious, accusing me of invading her privacy. I reminded her of the trust that had been broken and how her actions had consequences. The argument escalated until I finally told her that I would not continue living this way. I decided to file for separation because I couldn't handle the constant deceit. Olivia was shocked and begged me to reconsider, but I stood firm on my decision. I packed a few things and moved in with my parents temporarily to think about what to do next. I made sure to inform Olivia that I would be pursuing legal options for the separation. Edit, I want to clarify a few things. Mark is not someone I know from my past. I had never met him before the confrontation. Also, Olivia's business requires her to interact with many people, so I understand the need for networking. However, the way she has interacted with Mark feels different from just business. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.